In a previous video, straightening a timber stud wall, I mentioned that during what I call the pre-sheet, not only do you have to straighten the studs and your walls, but the other thing you need to do is go around and put in any extra noggins or trimmers that you may need. And one of the main areas where that's going to happen is in your bathroom. So what we're looking at is a bathroom. Obviously, I haven't drawn the rest of the house around it. It's just too busy and took too much away from the drawing and I'm actually going to take out a few of these walls as we go so we can concentrate on the main areas. So there's uh, a few different things we have to think about in the bathroom. The first thing is where are we going to put the bath? So obviously to put in our bath we're going to need a frame to support our bath and there's a few different options that we have uh, nowadays. This is probably the most popular method nowadays. It's uh, a bit like an island if you like because the bath sits out uh, away from the wall and the easiest way is just to build a short wall frame um, short stud frame and the bath sits in the top of this but uh, obviously the bath is uh, round or has rounded edges generally so the other thing we need to do is or what they traditionally do nowadays get a sheet of structure floor flooring or a large sheet of ply or um, uh, yeah, something like that, and they cut the shape, the shape of the bath out around there, and they also then have to allow some packing so that you can get your villa board generally or whatever lining you're going to use, and the tile and the tile glue and everything else to fit under the lip of the bath. Now the the big thing to remember with the height of this wall, it's preferable to make that height work tiles because the last thing you want to be doing is cutting um, small tiles along the floor or indeed up under the bath so you have to take into account the thickness of the floor tiles and the actual size of the tiles that you're going to put on the wall to determine the height of this bath. Uh, the other thing you need to do is make sure you put in a row of noggins around here that will enable you to nail whatever lining you're going to use onto around the top of the bath to give it good support and some people still say and I still personally think I would recommend throwing in a damp proof course or some sort of flashing around there um, what would traditionally happen nowadays is after you put the lining in you would get the waterproofer to come in and they would seal these corners but it still doesn't hurt for the cost of a little bit of um, polyurethane damp proofing just to throw a bit of a flashing in around that corner just in case your um, waterproofing membrane gets compromised. You could also put some down that corner as well just in case. But then the bath can go in and the bath as I said sitting on the packers so that when the tiler comes along he can um, get his villa board and get his um, or the liner, the chip rocker can put the villa board in and the tiler can get the tiles under the lip of the bath. The other thing is, depending on the type of bath, whether it's a fiberglass or a, a um, pressed metal bath, you're going to need to put something under the bath just to stop it from flexing. So traditionally what uh, they used to use was a sand cement mortar mix. Uh, however, nowadays um, some people have taken to using the low expanding foam. Um, However, I would suggest that if you're going to use the expanding foam, you need to weigh the bath down when you put it in, because it may actually lift the bath out of position. So fill the bath up with the water, or half up at least, so that the, the foam doesn't push the bath out of place. So that's one method of placing the bath. Um, the other thing you might need to do is put a noggin in here just to take the sheet on the end. I'll show you that with the next example. The other method is where we actually cut the bath into the wall so we actually have to trench out of the wall and the timber framing code in Australia allows a maximum depth of 25mm for these cuts and that's the only place we can cut 25mm deep is a single row of checkouts for our bath anywhere else we we're limited to 20mm but for our bath we can go 25 um, now they still want continuous edge support for our bath so we have to put in around here 
a piece of timber that the bath's going to sit on so the edge is continuously supported. And again, while we're at it, we can put in another piece on top that will support our sheets and give us somewhere to uh, um, screw our sheets or nail our sheets off to. And then the bath sits in between those and you can see that what will happen is the lining, the villa board will come down and it will actually sit inside or sit over that lip so that we actually have that slight lip there as a, a waterproofing layer to help us uh, stop the water running back up. So that's how we put it into what they call the closed side of the wall or the, in, into the actual wall. So now we want to actually fill in the open side of the bath. So again, there's two methods. There's the similar to what we just looked at with the island method. And again, that ha that wall has to be high enough. That height has to be high enough to allow for tiles. And you now need to allow for your villa board and your tiles to return underneath the lip of the bath. Well, the other option is to finish the tiles flush with the bath. So this is actually tucked in underneath the edge of the bath and just dive in here and have a look. So you can see with this top piece I've actually cut it and stood it on edge so it actually sits up underneath the lip of the bath and that gives you your, your distance here for your lining and your tiles and your glue and everything else. That's actually set back from the edge of the bath a little bit. And you'll also notice that because we're so close to the bath we've actually had to cut the back out of some of those studs to get them to fit around the bath or indeed you could turn them around and put them in edgeways so they fit. And again, oh sorry, also notice on the ends I've put a noggin in here and a noggin in here to take the sheet off this wall and I just screwed that to the back of this stud here instead of trying to hold it or nail it to the actual wall. So that's our bath put in place. Uh, the other thing you might have is a shower um, shower base. Okay, and it's put in similar to the bath. So again, we cut into the wall. And this time we actually have to cut our plate out because it's going to sit on the plate. The base again is bedded in on a bed of mortar um, and it's set in far enough that when we put our sheet on, the sheet's going to run straight down past the lip and allow the water to run into the actual shower base. Again, we need to put in noggins to hold our sheet or our lining and Depending on what you're going to have, you might have a shower screen up this side. So you're going to have to have some fixing for the shower screen. Some people might put a single noggin up there. That could be hard to find. You can put multiple, um, sorry, you could put a single stud up there. Um, some people put multiple noggins, which it might be easier to find. Or a common option nowadays is actually put some blocks so this is a 90mm wall, put 70mm blocks in and then just nail sheets of structure floor or ply between the, the, the studs. That way you virtually can't miss the noggin and fixing your shower screen will be quite easy. Uh, the other thing with the shower, again similar to the bath, uh, you could at this stage put in a flashing which would actually run into the shower base so it runs inside that lip so any water that gets in between your sheets run down there and run out into the shower base but again commonly nowadays the waterproofers say you don't need it as long as they when they've got the lining on and they start waterproofing they seal that area off as well so there's a few more noggins there the other main thing you might have in the wet area of course is your toilet and you might have to put some noggins in you should put some noggins in for your toilet roll holder whether it be to the side of the toilet or slightly to the front um, and of course you're going to want somewhere to mount the cistern to so similar to what we did with the shower just put in a couple of blocks behind this sheet of ply so we've got plenty of area to, to screw the 
the system to. A couple other things you might need to do. Think about where your tower rails are going to go. So you can put in some blocks to take your tower rails. And you might also have to think about where your vanity unit is going to be placed. So you can screw some, uh, put some blocks in to screw the vanity to. Especially if you're going to use one of these floating ones. Um, they are actually all supported by the wall. So you definitely want to know where your noggins are for that. Um, and then the other ones, commonly the carpenter doesn't necessarily install these, but they need to be done, is for your taps. And the plumber would generally install these as he goes, but you could have a couple of noggins behind the bath, or they could even be down this side nowadays, for the uh, taps for the bath. And up in this corner with your shower, you're going to need a noggin for the shower rows, and again, a noggin somewhere for your taps to be mounted to. Uh, but the plumber may generally do those as he goes. So there is our bathroom fully kitted out. It looks a bit more busier now than it did uh, before because we've thrown in a heap of noggins and we're ready to sheet our bathroom.